Hello everyone, how are you today? Sorry I'm a bit late, both in terms of the general stream as well as even after I set it to 1.30 instead of our regularly scheduled 1 o'clock, I was still like 5 minutes late, sorry for that. Uh, Nick, not 4 more minutes, not 4 minutes, we are ready to go, ish, we're ready to go, ish, let me just change this to, hello board collect, how are you? Wait, do I have, one second, do I have uh, audio on, let me just mute myself, perfect, great. I should have audio on, hopefully, if I don't, you'll let me know. Past that, let me just switch this to live chat. Let me pop this out and let's get going. How are you all doing? How are you all doing? Good morning, everyone. It is Alex. I don't know why I said that. I was going to say it's Alex Rathley from Board Game Co., but I don't really do that in the live stream. So, let's go with this. Pariah, good morning. Coming to say hello, but can't stay for all of it. Nick, good evening. William, hello. It's almost 1.30. Had the screen up for a bit. Yes, indeed, Borg. Nick, I might have missed a few, but I feel like Devin and... Something have not been in a live thing for a while. I, I feel like you either meant to say Devin and Co, Devin and Jenna, or any of those things. Uh, it's supposed to happen. Basically, it was supposed to. So, the, the weekly live in general, once upon a time, was, was uh, myself, uh, myself, Devin, and Meg, when we were all doing stuff together. Then Devin took a jog of Lucky Duck, and he tried to be as present as possible, but it kind of didn't work as much. Meanwhile, Jenna was a regularly scheduled guest, because we like Jenna, and she's pretty... Oh, this is a uh, Catan sticker. It's Catan. It's Catan as a donut. We'll get back to that in a second. Anyways, uh, past that, it then what happened is it just became hard to rely on inconsistent ones. So we technically, like a month and a half ago, we technically said, hey, you know what? Every two to three weeks, or maybe that, maybe every three to four weeks, we'll just do a, a game show. We might go on a game show, and we'll just have all of us on it. That was the plan. It hasn't happened, but it, still, it should still happen. I imagine it will still happen. It just hasn't happened recently. So as of right now, you are correct. Devin and Jenna have not been in for a while, or Meg too, for that matter. At this point, I think what we're mostly aiming for, at least with these, at least with the Thursday live streams, I think my main goal at this point is going to be just myself doing a regularly scheduled Q&A, or alternatively, um, having all four of us together in some sort of game show. That's my current goal. Things There's always room for flexibility. There's a variety of things that... Uh, uh, there's a variety of things that we want to do at any given point. It's just a question of the bandwidth and making sure it all happens consistently. Although consistently is the problem. I find, I find the things that I am able to do myself are more consistent. The things that I, the things that we have to get together is a lot more scheduling, a lot more work. Again, this is regularly why I have so much respect for the dice tower for everything they managed to do. I think that they're unparalleled in the space. Okay. So anyway, short version is they'll be back. They will be back. They better be back. Jacob, my watch must be fast. No, I'm just late. Nick, four more minutes. Board collect. Hello, Alex. Diego, hello, hello. James, good afternoon. Nick, what's the sticker on the back of the laptop? So, this sticker is from, I want to say Muir. Jenna Muir, I want to say. I think that's her last name. Uh, but she, basically, I think she, well, not I think. I know she works for Inside Up, but she also has her own little paraphernalia company. So, she has a little uh, Catan sticker that is currently on the back of the laptop. But... You know, it's a different laptop than usual. I have a few laptops. Don't get me started on why. At this point, the laptops have mostly become my kids' laptops. But I think I currently have one, two, three. I have four laptops. Five, if you count some random one from the UK. Actually, let's go into the five laptops. Let's go into the story of the five laptops. You'll learn a little bit more about me and my uh, history. Not much, not much. But anyways, I currently have five laptops. Let's go through each of those five laptops. The first three are basically remnants from my last job. When I worked for uh, my old company, basically my, my boss was somebody who liked to switch technologies up a lot. So I've had a variety of different headphones, a variety of different laptops, and over time I've just had a variety of laptops. So I currently have three laptops from my old job. From that, from those three laptops, one of them is my dedicated travel laptop. It's a nice little thing. It flips into a tablet, so it's good for like tablet slash you know whatever. It's not the it's not the biggest powers of a machine, but it's a good combination of laptop and tablet that I really enjoy. This is actually also, by the way, this is a pretty good one, but this is a little bigger. So I have my go-to travel laptop. That's the last laptop I used when I left that job. But I had two others that were kind of just sitting in a closet doing nothing until I started playing Minecraft with my kids. And the problem with that is, well, not. I mean, I started playing a lot of video games, but I wanted to play more more at the same time, playing Overwatch and Minecraft and Fall Guys and playing them all at the same time. And the problem with that is you need multiple computers to do that. And I was like, I can't buy multiple gaming computers. But these are all pretty easygoing games to play, for the most part. Uh, if you scale down the graphics a little here, there, whatnot, especially Overwatch, you need to scale down a drop. But uh, decent laptops can run it. So I've been using my old three laptops from work as a bit reasons to have extra laptops around. This just happened to be on the table right now because my kids were playing Minecraft right before this. And so I uh, moved this over here. That's why you're seeing a new laptop. Then the other two laptops are one of them. Efren, you have one and a half laptops. 
The other two laptops, one of them is going to be one that I got while visiting, um, well, Poland, basically. I have a laptop that, at one point, I visited Steamforge Games a year and a half ago, and went straight from there to Poland, to GameFound. And the problem is, I left my laptop at TSA, and I needed a laptop to work. So I bought a cheap laptop at a store in the UK. Turns out, cheap laptops are cheap laptops. I, I shouldn't have gotten, I probably should have gotten a Chromebook or something like that, but I... I got a like a 300 euro laptop or 300 pound laptop and um, it's garbage. It's hot garbage. I still own it, but I find it an incredibly frustrating experience. If anyone is in the need of a UKGE uh, plug, because it's going to be a UKGE plug, but I basically was a 300 dollar laptop that I, was, I just needed for the trip. I should have gotten a Chromebook, whatever. It is what it is. It's a mistake. Honestly, I should have just not gotten it at all in hindsight, but working from my phone the whole time, that's, I don't really know what my options were. I don't know what my options were. So uh, it is what it is, but I bought a bad laptop that I have in the attic. No one's using that. It's hot garbage. And then the last laptop, laptop number five, is my main laptop currently, which is a powerhouse of a machine. I actually bought it from someone in our Discord who was selling a, a very strong laptop at a reasonable price point, and uh, I, I bought it from him, and it's a very, very strong, very good powerhouse of a machine that I really enjoy. So... Um, those are my five laptops, and now you know a bit more about my laptop situation. I also have a tablet, a phone, and a desktop, so lots of computers going on. Anyways, let's go through all the questions now that I got through the stickers on the laptop. Uh, Ruse, hey Alex, how's it going? How's it going, Ruse Games? JB, have a PlayStation Fall? Sadly not. I was hoping to play it at PAX Unplugged this past year. Someone brought it, knew, knew how to play it. We did not play it. Efrain, I'm stopping by to say hi. I was watching the top 10 games that hurt crowdfunding. Yes, I saw your comment. And I know, when I was going through the Chai T for 2 and I saw your comment, I recognized your name and I realized it was you. So yeah, I saw that comment there, but I, I can tell you in the middle of going through those videos. Ben, why is the stream different from all of the streams? I mean, there's a few reasons. It started at 1.30. Oh, you're being you're making a Passover joke. Oh, Ben, hi. Okay, so a few reasons. One, it started at 1.30 instead of 1 o'clock. Two, I have a different laptop on the table. I don't have a three. Is there a three? I don't know what the third reason is. And then obviously we have Passover coming up shortly, which is probably what your comment was in reference to, Ben, because why is this night different than all other nights? Jason, hi Alex, when can we expect to see your God of War content? Jason, fun fact, if you had asked me that question about 40 minutes ago, I would have said, I have no idea. I don't, I mean, come on, didn't reach, Simon didn't reach out to me, uh, I have no, there's no plans for God of War content at all, I don't have a copy, so the answer as of 40 minutes ago was nada, nothing, you got nothing. Um, as of around 24 minutes ago, somewhere in that range, literally, literally about, like, right before the stream, so if you go back, if the stream started at 1.30, so as of about 18 minutes ago, okay, roughly about 18 minutes ago, uh, I found out that I will indeed likely be doing God of War content. Now, it's TTS only, just for the record, so it's only going to be Tabletop Simulator, there's not a physical prototype, but they um, they will. Pr I will probably be doing a God of War gameplay, um, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I, I believe it's going to be unsponsored. I reached out to them, frankly. I reached out and said, "Hey, I've been following the comments on your page, and I know you guys do a lot of. I know you guys do a lot of sponsored content with us, but I'm happy to help out. So if you want to do a, a unsponsored gameplay, I'm more than happy to do it. And uh, yeah, so as of as of 18 minutes ago, I believe I will have a God of War gameplay going up probably next week, but we'll find out. No guarantees. No guarantees until it happens, but we'll see. Uh, Curve Cut Games and Ideas. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Curve Cut Games and Ideas. Uh, good morning from Seattle. Oh my gosh, I need to go back to Seattle. Seattle has good coffee. I miss good coffee. I miss good coffee. Michael, how, hello, how do you like Monumental after a time? Do you think they'll make a third attempt for Kickstarter and fix the game on the map? No, I do not think they will in any way try to do another Kickstarter. I think uh, that, what's the name of the company again? Um, Funforge. I think Funforge is done with crowdfunding. They're not done as a company, they're done with crowdfunding. Uh, I like Monumental. It's been a while since I played it. Nick, what's the next non-board game event social gathering you're looking forward to? Non-board game event? Are there non-board game events? I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. But in, in all seriousness, uh, outside of family things, I don't think I have a lot of non-board game events that I go to. To me, the stuff I go to are almost all revolving in some way or another around board games, whether it's um, a convention, whether it's a publisher, you know, bringing me in for a game, whether it's a content creator, whatever it is, they are usually, they are usually, um, they're usually, what's it called? They're usually uh, board game related. Asaf, I see your comment. I'll get to it. I'll get to it in a second. Efrain, uh, I only have one and a half laptops. That is either a funny comment or an interesting story. I'm more curious if it's an interesting story. Board Collect, when your work is digital, you have too many computers. Yeah, my work was digital. Our computer was a, um, we were a, an e-commerce development agency. So that's that's part of why the computers were flowing. But also is my, my old boss liked his toys a lot. 
Ajaz, uh, we, uh, Pariah, unless you're 25 years into the software development and choose to leave work on work computers. Speaking of people who I got laptops from, Ajaz, have you ever entered, have you ever played the board game King of Tokyo? Thoughts? Uh, Ajaz, I think um, I have played King of Tokyo a lot. I've played King of New York too. I have not played the new one, King of Monster Island, whatever it is. Uh, I think King of Tokyo is a very, very good gateway game. I eventually got bored of it, but I had it in my collection for years. I think it's a very good gateway game. Kaylin, hey Alex, you ever played Forbidden Stars, Galaxy and Flans, Flames? I know Devin upgraded it all. Sadly not. I've only played Forbidden Stars, not the uh, fan made expansion. Prior, thoughts on the latest Simon campaign and its slow progress? Absolutely. Okay, so let's do the uh, Simon campaign and its slow progress. God of War. I thought that would be an easy million dollars. Easy million dollars. I have to go take a look at what the projections were for it, but I, I thought it was going to be an easy million dollars. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Well, unfortunately, it's a relative term. If you're if you're Simon, unfortunately, it's not. If you're GameFound, unfortunately, it's not. For the average person, it doesn't really make a difference either way. Uh, well, I guess it does for stretch goals, but not really doing stretch goals so much as daily unlock. So yeah, for the average person, it doesn't really make a difference either way. Uh, God of War is doing fairly poorly, and it's a combination of a variety of things. And and some of it they are trying to address already. If you take a look, and others I don't know. The first is that Simon did not have any content on the game, any gameplay copies, any. They didn't have a rule book. A lot of the things, and this is actually interesting. If you go back three years that's what simon did they didn't bother doing gameplays or content they kind of were like whatever here's our game buy it or not uh there and there tended to be enough uproar and and keep in mind obviously i'm a little biased in this conversation i worked for game found but also simon tends to work with me on uh gameplays at this point so there is a little bias in my everyone should have a gameplay but also the practical reality is historically speaking when simon has not had content on their games it has not worked as well um, or it has it has been something that's been wanted a lot from the people and so they had no content on the game day one nothing at all for one of their most anticipated games they had no content at all on the game which some of it was due to licensing issues they don't have a physical prototype and it looks like they said they're gonna they're going to have a game place up but i believe it's tts only across the board so we'll see what happens there but i think part of it is the lack of content uh, i think another part of it is the fact that um another part of it is the shipping at, it was not a good price point. And I also had an entry price point, which is, in my opinion, a terrible idea. They have a $70 retail pledge with no stretch goals. And frankly, if you're looking at that, don't. Don't look at that. That is the worst possible way you can buy this uh, game in any way, shape, or form. Basically, if you want the retail copy of God of War, you should be backing it, not backing it, you should be buying it at retail when you won't have to pay that $40 shipping because you're saving $10 or whatever it is. You're saving, you're saving a fictional amount that you'll anyway save by getting it anywhere else and so that retail pledge the only thing the retail pledge serves to do in my opinion is it serves to instill the idea of a bad value as the very first thing you see and the second thing it does is um the second thing it does is it then puts that like forty dollars shipping as like more than half the pledge like you see and you're like seventy dollars versus forty dollars it's more than half the pledge i think they would have done better had they skipped that seventy dollar pledge entirely and gone straight to the ninety dollar pledge the forty dollars from ninety while still a large percentage would not have been as drastic and you wouldn't have had the immediate perception of a bad value or paying for stretch goals so i think that a starting pledge was a bad idea i think the lack of content was a bad idea i think in general simon has had some of the worst shipping rates from any company for a while and make no mistake i'm not i'm not saying they're making money in shipping or not i don't care don't know uh, i think shipping is expensive and a lot of times it is subsidized but regardless in the board game space i think they'd be better served by making their game ten dollars more expensive and cutting shipping by ten dollars not that i'm trying to advocate whatever but it is a lot of it is perception and then also it doesn't help as well just you know may as well own it uh game found was also down for like 10 minutes i think from a the game went live at one o'clock if i recall correctly one o'clock eastern standard time and then at around 120 till around 125 it went down or something like that completely so that didn't help either but all those things i think that's a smaller factor but i think the perception of value around the god of war campaign is just not there they are trying to fix that oh another thing that i think they did as a huge mistake is they made it a one to two player game which for many people actually makes it more appealing i think there are many people myself included that are like one to two player dungeon crawl specifically i'm here for it but then the problem is I think there are a lot of people who play these games. Like, the amount of times I see a game that I think four players is already too much, and then there's comments being like, do you have a five to six player expansion? It happens a lot. People want that additional player count range. And so I think the one to two player range did limit the perception. I think a lot of people who would rather play their dungeon calls with three or four were like, well, not for me. I'll buy something else. And they just released a three to four player expansion. The problem is you have to be following the campaign. You have to have not tapped out. If you already tapped out of the Simon campaign, you'll never know that there's a three to four player expansion that they already released. So 
that's kind of the conversation around that. It's doing very poorly. It might cross a million dollars if they're really, really, really lucky. Normal trends at this point would say it wouldn't, but uh, they might be able to recover from that depending on what shows up and all those things. And now that I'm many comments behind, let's go ahead and scroll through this over here. Um, good afternoon. Have you playing any comp uh, thoughts on the Wait, what happened over here? Why is my chat? What is my chat doing? Sorry, my chat, I think they've gotten into Godzilla. I think that my chat is messing up one second. There we go. Uh, okay. Adam Nichols. Good afternoon, Alex. Have you played any campaign games off camera lately? Hmm. Good question. I've been going through Mythwind a bit. Does that count? What else have I been playing? Agamoni has been on camera. Uh, I think I plan on playing through some Lost Runes of Arnak, the solo stuff. The solo or co-op stuff. I don't think there's a lot. There's a bunch I plan on diving into. I want to dive into... Um, Resident Evil shortly. I want to dive into uh, Rove. Is gonna be, I, I have that. I want to dive into um, Bad Karmas. There are a bunch I plan on diving into, but not a lot that I'm really going through past Agamonia at the moment. Oh, Primal. Primal soon. Soon. Okay. Uh, Foreteller Games. Hi, Alex. God of War sounds like a lot of fun. It does sound like a lot of fun. I want to play it, but we'll see. Also, hi. How's it going? Shiny, happy meeples. Hi, Alex. Will you be going to UKGE this year? Sadly not. As much as I'd love to, it's... UKGE is an interesting one because I really do want to go to UKGE, but when I think of the cost of going to UKGE versus what I get out of it as a content creator versus the cost of going to any other convention locally, it's just easier to go to a convention locally. Uh, UKG is actually fairly expensive, both in terms of the flights. Like the flights, I, I remember the last year when I was looking at, maybe I have to take a look earlier, but last year when I was looking, it was like $1,400 to fly in. It was a little crazy. Uh, versus if you, depending on where or what, like you can go to Europe for 600 bucks on a ticket. Like it's much more reasonable. The, the cost of UKG was a little insane versus what I get out of it. So unless a company wants to bring me in, I don't know. And then also there's a factor that I regularly go to, um, I regularly get to go to Steamforge Games. So I get to go to England, I get to go to Europe, uh, and I don't need, the only thing I'm missing is UKGE per se. And I'm sure I will at some point, but it's a lower priority for me. Uh, okay, we got... Asa Jaws, only found out Marvel United Multiverse recently. Devastated, I missed out in the UK, so not sure where to find a retailer. Perhaps eBay eventually. The good news is, um, Ajaz, I don't know if you've noticed, but DC United is coming shortly to GameFound. Easy Board Games, miss good coffee? I almost take offense. You should straight up take offense. I miss American good coffee. I like a little bit more sugar in my coffee. As much as the coffee was good, I, I miss... Portland has some coffee that is good and more my jam, so I'm sorry and I apologize in advance. Well, I apologize... Not in advance. I apologize now. Sin, is the dead keep different enough from Black Plague and its expansions to own both? Yes, if you are not shy about spending the money. No, if you try to be more mindful and conservative about what you back. Like, I think if you're someone who tries to, like, back only a few campaigns, only when you really need it, and you have the Black Plague, you don't need the dead keep. If you're someone who doesn't mind dropping $200 on a good game that is different enough, then by all means, go for it. Ben, yes, it was meant to be a player in awards. Aaron. Uh, Aaron, 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 where is it? Where, where would you like to travel to locate? Where would you like to travel on vacation? Any country you'd like? Um, I'd love to go to Japan. I think and I'd love to go to Italy. I think Japan, Italy, maybe. Um, what's the other one? Um, oh my gosh. Um, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. There's another one I want, I want to go to. Yeah. I can't remember. Either way, Italy and Denmark. That's uh, not Denmark. Not Denmark. I didn't know I said Denmark. Italy and uh, Japan. Uh, board Collect. I played the new one at Level Up, and it was a blast. Oh, you played the new Monster Island. There we go. Uh, thanks, Team Again, for my kids. King of Tokyo, Board Collect. If you want to, if you want co-op, the new King of Monsters is great. Yep, easy board games. Expansion for Forbidden Stars. Is it an official expansion or fan-made? It is fan-made, Asaf. Foreteller. Players always want to try out a game before pledging triple digits. Getting a TTS mod seems to be a popular start for any crowdfunding. In general, there's always a risk to it, but I think at the very least having gameplays or some sort of content gives people a better idea of what's going on. Like, the trailer video looks great, but doesn't tell you enough about the game. Joey Coach, hello everyone. Hi Joey, how are you? Uh, Dwarf Furious, hey Board Daddy, I hate you. I saw a cute game on Kickstarter called Cheezers Arena or something, so I backed it. Cheezers Arena sounds terrible. I don't think I'd ever back that, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so Ajaz, yes, they've gotten to Godzilla and Kong, so looking at the entire King of Set, the Monster Box of Monster Island, enjoy. Sean, when will you admit Inheritor's greatness? When I'm dead. When I'm cold and dead. Uh, Krishnanu Prasad Das, hey, what do you think of Great Western Trail? Why are your thoughts? I like Western, Great Western Trail, but I do not love Great Western Trail. I think it's a good game. That's all I, I think it's a good game. And I, people love it. I, I haven't found the magic of it. I think it's very well done, but no magic for me. 
Jogos, I don't mind uh, one, two, three, four players. It doesn't matter since I mostly play solo. That's for you. Like, again, people who play solo or two player for the dungeon crawlers are going to look at a one to two player one and be like, yes, I want this even more. But they probably would have gotten it anyway because you can still play. Like, I can play Master of Darkness solo just fine despite the six player count or whatnot. So I think that I think the one two player made people who are solo or two players happier, but they might have bought it anyway versus it stops people from buying it if they wanted three or four. Vanessa, help, I have a cardboard boxes and plastic shrink addiction. Oh, Vanessa, this is easy. This is easy. Okay, sorry. Some people think this is a big problem. It's not. All you have to do is de-shrink those games, and then you just have a cardboard boxes problem. The shrink is the shrink is not a problem at all. You can just take it out of shrink, and all you have is a cardboard boxes problem. That's a little harder. I don't have any good advice there. But the cardboard boxes and plastic shrink, all you need is a knife and problem solved. You're good to go. Brian, good afternoon. Hello, campers. Hello, Brian. Nick, in the Netherlands, we king we we kings that next week. Where a lot of people are buying and selling second half stuff in parks. Do you have something that I don't know what that is? I, I feel like I'm missing something. We kings that next week. Where a lot of people are buying and selling second half stuff in parks. Do you have something like that over there? Not that I know of. Stacy, dang notifications is scrolling on YouTube. Never got notified you were live. Stacy, have you rung the bell? I was just ringing the bell. That's how it's supposed to work. I don't know if it'll work for you, but it's supposed to. Brian, hello, Stacy. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. And Stacy, hello, Ryan. Hello, um, Ryan. It's lots of, lots of eyes. Uh, Priya, I'm at UKG this year. Ah, I want to go, man. I do. It's just limited time and lots of money. Fortello, luckily have a great sound desire who lives in the UK. Hoping he has a good time at UKGE. Ooh, fun. Uh, Stacy, oh my god, I need coffee. You and me both, Stacy. Sean, have you dabbled in Summoner Wars? I just bought pretty much everything for it, but never played it before. I played the original edition once. I have the second edition now. I've been meaning to play it more, but I haven't been... I haven't fallen in love with it. Easy board games, fair enough. Yes, indeed. Uh, Stacy, hi Alex, any info on the next level up retreat? The next level up retreat is going to be February of 2025. We are not doing a second one this year. We talked about it, we went back and forth. We decided to stick with one a year for right now. At some point we might jump to two a year, but for right now, until it's a little firmer and more off the ground, we're gonna do one a year instead of two a year. So February of 2025. Boy, thoughts on shrunk down versions of games like Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs or Pocket Watch? I don't know about Pocket Watch, that's funny, I like that. Um, I don't know. I think most of the time, a different version of a game is going to be derivative in a way that's not good. Most of the time. That's no different than sequels. It's just hard to make things that are good, and you're you're now locked into something. You're like, oh, we're just going to sell this because, hey, it's Castle of Burgundy Rolling Right. It's Castle of Burgundy the Dice Game. It's Castle of Burgundy the Card Game. You're selling the name, so you're just trying to, to make it work. Uh, I think that sometimes they're good. Like, I think I've seen mostly good feedback on Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs, but I think that's the exception, not the norm. Ryan, God of War seems to be slow to take off. Do you think this is due to the IP factor you discussed in a recent video, or do you think other factors are at play? I think other factors are at play. I think God of War combined with Simon actually should have done better. So, yikes. Adam, if you like good coffee, try coffee brewed in Kona, Hawaii. It's not acidic, so you can drink more without acid reflux. I, I don't know if the acidity of coffee bothers me much, but that is good to know. Efrain, which is your biggest game disappointment? Mine is Agricola. It's not that Agricola is a bad game, it's just very disappointing. I discover what nostalgia means when watching old game reviews. My biggest board game disappointment. I know I've had them. I know I have. I just don't know offhand. I mean, I've done videos on my biggest board game disappointments. Uh, what's it called? Merchants of the Dark Road. That might be one of my bigger disappointments. It's not a bad game, but I really thought it'd be a great game, and it's it's not for me, unfortunately. So it's not bad. It's just, it's okay. It's okay. So that might be my biggest game disappointment, only because of how high I was expecting and hoping and thought it would be, and then how it crashed for me. So, yeah. Again, not a bad game. Just I would I not it's it, I was really wanting to like that one a lot. Uh, Dwarf Furious. I was in Denmark recently. They have a great board game called the Cafe called the Bastard Cafe. Good to know. Adam, I'm very interested in Rove. I'll have content for you. Efrain, if you love coffee, you should try Puerto Rican or Cuban coffee. I will try to remember to do that. I guess. I think I've had. Have I had Cuban? Have I had? What is it that Nat makes? Nat makes good coffee, but I don't know if it's what it is. Curve Card Games Ideas. You can get some great coffee in Montreal and good coffee in Vancouver. In Toronto, you can get some Timmy's. Tim Hortons is okay. They're not bad. I don't know if I love it. Dwarf Furious. Cheese Arena has mice gladiators. What's not to love? The, the amount of cheese. The sheer amount of cheese uh, instinctively um, has me not as interested in it. Jenna. Jenna. Okay, who wants to start getting Jenna to get rid of uh, Merchants, Co Merchants uh, of the Dark Road or whatever? Uh, that, that should be the next one after Catan. Uh, Jenna, I'm glad. I'm glad that you like... Merchants of the Dark Road. I am, because I think it's nice that a game that has that level of production is enjoyed by someone. I think it's fine. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I just, I wish, I wish. We can still be friends. We can still be friends. 
Michael, I don't have any big comp games, only small paleo, but after I saw the Dead Keep, I close and close to pre-order it. I think Dead Keep's a lot of fun, but you kind of have to like that type of game. All the small teas. Hello, Alex and friends. I hope you're having a great week. I am having a great week. Thank you for asking. I hope you're having a great week, too. Smooth. Hi, Alex. Getting killed late, but we'll go back and watch the early part later. Thanks for all you continue to do. Smooth, I can just start again. It's not a big deal. Hey, everyone. All right, we're going to be ready in two seconds. I just need to pop out chat. we got live chat. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I have to, I have to break this. I, I have to break the bit because Jen is posting. It's pick up and deliver. Of course you don't like it. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I'm, I, you're definitely definitely something to that. But there's other things too about the game. I, I thought that the... I don't know. I thought the whole market and reel was a little bit tedious. I thought the idea like of journeying on adventures, like you're always going to join people. Almost always. It's almost no point. I hated the fact that the shortcut in that game is the more expensive way to do things. Like, they have a whole thematic aspect, but I know I wasn't alone in that. There's a lot of decent things about the Merchant's Code, but to me, they're all decent. But also, I will grant you, it is pick up and deliver it, and it's not a genre I like. Michael, in theory, it's possible to play Dead Keep solo. Absolutely it is, yes. I personally wouldn't. I prefer it at two or three, but uh, or t actually maybe four. No, two. It depends on the player count. It depends on the character count. But I would do a two or two for sure. Solo, I probably wouldn't as much. Board Collect, love the screen problem solution. Absolutely happy to help. I'm here for you. Frog and Socks, hello from Australia. This is the first time I've caught you live. Hello, Frog and Socks. Welcome aboard, whatever time it is. It's like, what, nine hours ahead over there? It's a little crazy. You are furious. I like Summoner Wars. They keep adding new factions. Love those sand goblins and kill the dwarfs. Brian T. Kulkatan, Merchants of the Dark Road, and Jenna get Alex to play Vindication Expansions. Uh, Brian, as soon as Jenna shows up, again, we will make that the priority. As soon as we show up for Jenna Fridays, we will play the Vindication Expansions. I just have to know in advance. Rick, hi Alex, since your dead key playthroughs, and other than the bosses needing to possibly react to the boss stage cards with the tab more boss uniqueness, have you developed any other gripes since? No, Rick. Uh, I really like the dead keep. It's not a perfect game, but I really like it. The thing that's holding it back for me is that boss issue. I want the bosses to have more interesting stage cards, and even just more interesting bosses in general. Uh, but I do really like the game. Krishna Du Prasad Das. If I want it just to be a game that is about two hours, has a great amount of player interaction, great amount of player interaction, and very fun to play, can handle heavy games. Sankori's good. Sankori's very good. I like Sankori a lot. Nick Binnakers, will there be another top 10 non-board game things? Uh, there should, because I've found one. I have at least one. I should I should do another video like that. So, I have at least one more new non-board game thing that I'm currently obsessed with. It's silly, it's stupid, I just like my toys. And so, uh, maybe at some point, I probably need to wait a little bit more time though, because I don't do non-board game things all that much. Easy board games. I prefer a game that says straight up this for one to two players and a game saying they're for four and then the experience is terrible. Being transparent and being real is important. Agreed. The question is, is it good at three or four or not? That's the question. But I otherwise totally agree with you. Kirk, I'm expecting my first kid in June. Any advice on how to play board games with a newborn? Uh, it depends. Are you comfortable getting rid of it? Because if you are, I have advice on how to play board games with a newborn. Mr. Webzubs, God of War, anyone? Uh, I, I mean, God of War, I like God of War. I'll go back to Kara, because let's, let's give a serious answer. So, uh, having a kid's gonna, gonna disrupt your board game schedule, absolutely. I think you have to be comfortable with playing less games until the kid requires a little less of your time and attention, which will happen eventually, but those first few nights, weeks, months even, may not feel that way. Uh, get used to smaller, shorter games, games you can knock out in 20 minutes, 30 minutes even, you know, as opposed to playing those two-hour games, and adjust slowly but surely to the fact that Eventually, they will get older. Eventually, they will possibly have siblings. Those siblings will distract each other, and you might have a chance. It just takes time. Stacy, Merchant of the Dark Road stuff from Hype Sadly. It's a good game. I feel like if it wasn't a Kickstarter, it would have been better. Um, I don't know if that's true for me, but it's hard to say. I agree it's suffering from a hype, but ultimately, I just wasn't pulled in enough. It was good. I had fun. It was a good game. Board Game Garden, Merchants, of, Merchants is Amazing, Alex is Wrong, Totally Fair. Uh, your video on how new games are for new gamers was very insightful. How do you determine whether to place an older game in your collection with a new one that shares a lot of the same mechanics? There's no perfect answers. The real answer for me comes down to, do I think I'm going to play the older game? It always comes down to, whenever I play games, it's, do what do I think I'm going to play? At any given point, sometimes I get a new game, and I think I will play the old game less. Sometimes I get a new game, and I'm like, no, the old game is the one I want. Uh, there's a lot of hype around Cult of the New, but there's also a degree of nostalgia for things that are old. Both things are true. I still have five tribes in my collection. It's still a great game. But I get rid of older games all the time, and I keep older games all the time. It comes down to what I think I'm going to play. Stacey, don't call, call Mission of the Dark Road. Whoa, whoa, Kevin! Oh my gosh, I missed you. Kevin! Kevin, dear lord, thank you as usual, Kevin. You're an insane person, and I appreciate you. 50, dear lord, Kevin. 
Okay. Kevin? I appreciate you. Have you played Harmonies? I have not played Harmonies. Uh, Stacy, I would keep Merchant of the Dark Road over Aquatica, poking at you, Alex. That's okay. We're allowed to have our own individual tastes, and I highly encourage it. I think it's a good thing. Matthias, yes, we can hear you. Uh, Matthew, I was, I was messing around. I was pretending I was starting again, because I usually do that at the beginning. But I was messing around. Ben, what's the highest ranked game on Board Game Geek that you would never recommend anyone buy, excluding things like games with newer versions? That's complicated. So... The tricky part there, I'm going to pull up BGG. The tricky part is anything ranked highly, even if I despise it, I probably am under the impression that it's a good game. So I would never not recommend a highly ranked game. Uh, let's find like something like, like Ark Nova. I'm getting rid of Ark Nova. My review will go up soon. We can check that out. I don't need Ark Nova. I don't think I want to play it again. Like I'm reluctantly willing to play it maybe on, on BGA, but like I'm not, I'm not here for it. But it's a number four ranked game, and people love it. What am I going to say? That I'm right? I would still recommend Ark Nova because it's a highly ranked game. So if we reframe the question, so I don't think there's anything in the BGG Top 100 that I would never recommend because it's ranked highly. Why wouldn't I? But let's find the closest thing on the Top 100 that I wouldn't play. Let's see if I can find anything in the Top 100 that I actively wouldn't play. Like even Ark Nova, I would play it on BGA. So something on the Top 100 that I wouldn't play. The answer might be, oh, we found, I found one, I found one. Okay. The highest ranked game on the top 100 that I actively would not play is Twilight Struggle. Uh, I specifically tried, and I, I used to like Twilight Struggle, but I found other games give me that same feeling in much less time and easier rules, easier everything. And I went back and tried to play Twilight Struggle specifically so that once upon a time I did a play this, not that between Watergate and Twilight Struggle, and I specifically replayed Twilight Struggle to, to be able to refresh myself because I hadn't played in a few years. And while I did that, I didn't enjoy it. And so I don't think I would play Twilight Struggle again. Stacy, no, Brian. What are your thoughts on Magnificent? I haven't played the Magnificent. I have the Magnificent. I have not played it. B Dog, besides the loop, I already have that one. What co op game would you recommend? So many. Spirit Island, uh, Unsettled, Zombicide, Cthulhu Death May Die. Cthulhu Death May Die is my highest ranked co op game. Uh, Too Many Bones is up there. Lots of them. Board Game Garden, we still need to play that. Yes, we do, Board Game Garden. Yes, we do, Jenna. I don't know why I said that. Uh, Dwarf Furious, top 10 best nicknames for Alex in the game. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Jenna will leave. Jenna will leave so fast. Um, Port Morgan Garden, pick up and deliver Hater. Jenna, I love Zaya, Legends of a Drift System, and I believe, what's the other one we said? Mistwind? Mistwind? I think that's a great game. So, it has to be done well. But outside of that... Rick, repeat question from a while back. Have you tabled Clash for Eternia since forever ago? Sadly not. Brian, wait... There's Clash for Eternia and... No, Clash for Eternia I have. I have played I have uh, played table Clash for Eternia. So yes, I have played Clash for Eternia since it arrived. Yes. It's the other one. The Masses of Eternia or Fields of Eternia that I have not. Brian, Borgen Garden, if you like Pick Up and Deliver, let's play Firefly since you love space and stuff. Michael, what's your most and least favorite game mechanics? My favorite game mechanic is drafting. My least favorite game mechanic used to be trick-taking, but it's changed. Now it's Pick Up and Deliver. Christian Pradas asks, do you play digital board games? If you do, what's your favorite? I do play digital board games. Uh, probably my favorite is Castle of Burgundy, because I just play Castle of Burgundy a lot. But I, I like it in person, too. I just play it the most digitally. Stacy, whoa, Kevin, amazing. Yes, Kevin is indeed amazing. Vanessa, very nice of Kevin. Uh, Stacy, what term is a high rank on BGG? It's a combination of a high rating and the number of people that rated it. So popularity counts. And the reason for that, the logical reason, is if you just said everything that's highly ranked is high, then meaning then you'd have someone who rated a single game a 10, and then that would be a 10 out of 10. So you have to put some degree of, you need a degree of gravitas. You need a degree of enough people rating it. So BGG basically puts a certain number of fake negative ratings in there, or zeros or tens, I don't know. They do they do a certain amount of just balance in there too, so that if you have an imaginary, let's just say, let's just make it up. If you have a hundred, you know, zeros, on every single game. Can you even rate a game a zero? Let's call it a one. Let's say they rate 100 games a one. Then at that point, until you have a lot of games rating the game highly, it won't counteract that. And so that ensures that there's a degree, a need for popularity too, which I think is a good thing to an extent because you do want to counter all those negative, all the, you want to counter the idea that somebody can go to their families and friends and their Kickstarter backers and they get 100 ratings and now boom, it's in the top 100 games of all time. That's crazy. So you do want to counter that. I think the algorithm could be a bit improved because I think it's a little too hard in terms of how much popularity that has to be, but you know, you could argue either way. Not user ratings with the rank number. Yep, that's the question. Morgan Garden, there's so many games in the top 100 I wouldn't play. T? T? What's T? I don't know what's happening. I understand that you wouldn't play games in the top 100, 
but I don't know the T. Uh, Easy Board Games. Alex, still interested in reviewing Terrascape? Will we see a video about it on your channel? Yes, you will see a video about it on my channel. Peter, hi Alex. I just went all in and bought everything Spirit Island related. Not played it yet. Any tips? Y you probably didn't need to get everything yet. Um, but I do... Th you bought everything Spirit Island and you haven't played it? You went from 0 to 100 and you hadn't played it? Was it a Kickstarter thing or was it... What, what, what happened? Tell me more, Peter. Tell me more. Uh, my tip would be start with the base game, play the base game, and then add expansions as you want. The expansions are good, at least the ones I played, uh, but I haven't played all the expansions, so I need to do that because I like the game. Adam, are you planning on bringing back Camp Co-op soon? Probably not. At this point, Meg and I obviously work together, do a lot of stuff together, but it's mostly going to be on this channel. I found, historically, I tried with Quack and Co. way back in the day. I tried with, uh, you know, Camp Co-op. I find it's very hard to be on top of multiple channels at the same time. It's just, for whatever reason, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of work to focus on growing two at once. And, um, so probably not. Um, there might be more stuff happening. There might be more, um, campaign games played, but that just requires less travel, frankly. Jacob, did you receive a Storm Raiders prototype? Do you have any early opinions on it? I did not receive a Storm Raiders prototype. B-Dog, what are your thoughts on Trolls and Princesses? Haven't played it. Twine and Ribbon, thanks, Kevin. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Kevin, indeed. Kishandu, what game in your collection stands test of time? Which game would you be would you play any time instead of it being very old? Castle of Burgundy. Castle of Burgundy is the, literally amongst the first games I ever bought. Like, the first time, the first batch of games I bought had Castle of Burgundy and Seven Wonders. Those are the only two left from my first batch of games. I had a whole bunch of other games I've had. I have a lot of older games. There actually is a video on the channel, the top 10 oldest games in my collection. You can check that out to see 10 games that stood the test of time for me. The 10 oldest games that stood the test of time. Wojtek, thanks for your content. Could you recommend a nice space sci-fi themed dungeon crawler? Flashpoint, maybe? It's a little stealth based, but Flashpoint. I think Flashpoint was good. I enjoyed that one. It's a photo. It's a it's um crowdfunding. You can't get it yet. There's also Rogue Angels that was fun. There's a bunch out there. I think. Uh, Brian, must be time for afternoon tea. Them Canadians are part British. What is happening with the tea situation? Morgan Garden. It's board game tea, aka drama. Wait. Oh, what's the tea? <laughs> you old man. Uh, Jenna, you're fun. What happened with the T though? What like what was the, this drama? Just that I didn't play certain. We don't want to play certain games, or was the drama drama that was trash talking the top one hundred? I don't understand fully. Okay. I feel like BG should open the website on a page with a separate lighter games list, so that first time it's the site will not get those to the top of the heavy games. That's interesting. So the first time you come to BGG, you're not exposed to the top one hundred. You're exposed to the top one hundred family games, or whatever. I hear the merit. It's complicated to do things like that well, but I hear the merit. Um, it's, uh, Ma Matthew, would you recommend Sleeping Queens to play with young kids? My kids would recommend it. I wouldn't. I don't enjoy Sleeping Queens, but my, my kids do enjoy it. I recommend Trio, okay? Uh, my kids love Trio. They get more enjoyment out of Trio uh, than they do Sleeping Queens, and um, I like it a lot more. So I recommend Trio for younger kids. Like, literally, my my at this point, my five-year-old plays it, so we're, we're, we're doing just fine there. Vanessa, I have so many Kickstarters never played, hence my cardboard box and plastic shrink addiction. Again, Vanessa, easily solve a problem. Just de-shrink them and you're good to go. Uh, Kishore to do, is Castle Burgundy your favorite Euro? Probably. Is Vindication a Euro? And Vindication is a Euro. <laughs> Vindication is arguably a Euro. So no, Vindication is my favorite Euro. Although Castle Burgundy is probably a cleaner Euro. Uh, so Castle Burgundy is one of my favorite Euros and probably the cleanest Euro that's favorite. Ben, are you going to Origins this year? Yes. Vanessa, too many games, too little time? Yes. Ben, I once read that VG rating algorithm, which they keep secret, takes into account the number of ratings each person rating the game is given as a way of fighting against bots, sock puppets. I never heard that. I never heard that. Possible. Never heard that. Peter, when I see a game I'm interested in, I just have to buy everything for it, play it digital, so know that I'm going to love it. Think I'll stick to the base game for a while, though. So you have played it digitally. Okay, Peter. Now I'm more on the same page. Adam, I'm getting to Phantom Meatbox eventually. That's another good one. Good choice. Which I'm excited about. Looks like a fun space dungeon crawler. Kevin, we need to connect on BGA. Kevin, anytime. Anytime, Kevin. Shoot me a, shoot me a thing. My, my username on BGA is, no one else listen, is Alex SR, okay, Alex SR, and, um, shoot me a, shoot me a message or something, connect or whatever, um, and we'll, we'll, I'm happy to play stuff, I play stuff on BGA all the time, except when it's Jenna's turn in all the games, in which case I don't play all the time, Sin, I can't keep up with all the Come On games, I wish it would slow things down a little, how do you feel about the cadence for Come On releases, and do you think it's having a negative effect, I think that's a crowdfunding problem in general, or honestly just board games, there's a sense or a need to constantly be on top of everything, but companies need to sell new stuff to continue to make money and stay in business. You don't have to buy all those stuff. That's why I had that video recently, New Games Are For New Gamers. 
it is tempting. Like, I'm at the point. I'm fine at the point where I wouldn't back the Simon games. Like, I hope they send them to me, but I wouldn't. Not nothing. Some of them games are still going to back. But, like, God of War. I haven't played it yet, and normally I would have backed it, but I finally cut back from all the backing. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm in a privileged position. I'm a content creator. I get a lot of games. Uh, I still pay for some games, but I get a lot of games sent my way. So I, I know that I always have tons of games I need to play, plus my own collection that I love, so it's easier for me to not back things even when I'm interested. Once I play it and I love it, then I'm kind of in trouble. I will buy anything if I already have played it and love it. But I've kind of moved away from buying things that I haven't played, for the most part. Sin, uh, no, we covered that. Jeffrey, thank you to the person who gifted me a channel membership. I've only ever received these on Alex's channel. You guys are awesome. It's Kevin. It's always Kevin. Mostly Kevin. Kevin's pretty awesome. The Borgen Garden. It's tea that I don't like a top of... Oh, it's tea that I don't like a top of the hunt. Jenna, I, I am an old man. I don't understand any of this. But all, honestly, Jenna... This, this should be a video. This should be a video. If you're not going to do it on your channel, let's do it on mine. Uh, being mean to the top 100. Let's do that sometime, okay? Whenever you actually show up. Like I, you get, I'm, I'm going to start thinking you don't like me, just for the record. I'm just going gonna, gonna to start thinking that. Uh, guess who? What are your thoughts on One Hit Heroes? Haven't played it. Brian, Jeffy, if you get on the Board Game Garden streams, you have a chance at memberships. <laughs> Good to know. Aaron, have you heard anything about the Metal Gear Board Game from Kasimon? I pre it last year. I don't know the current timeline. Uh, I actually just added that to my video list. Good job, Jenna. Good job. I've done, like, I, one of my favorite videos that I did with Devin was 15 games we would remove from the top 100 or something like that. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Brian, gas money isn't an issue for Jenna now. Don't let her tell you any different. Jenna, that's true. Brian's covering your gas money for assuming we play Vindication. Just saying. Uh, let's see. Have you heard anything about Metal Gear, board game, but board game garden? But if anyone knows my general taste in games, it's pretty obvious. Um, oh, Jenna. Jenna. Do you know what I just played? I don't know if it's your type of game at all. I assume not. But I just played Ironwood. Uh, Project Ironwood from Mind Clash. I just played that. I can't wait to play it again. I don't know if it's your type of game at all. But I know you like uh, Septima. Which, actually, I don't like Septima that much. I don't dislike Septima. It's just okay to me. But uh, I, I really like Project Ironwood. It's one game. Anyone watching this, usual disclaimer. It's one game. Sometimes one game is good. And then the next game, you're like, okay, it's always the same game. But I'm excited about Project Ironwood, okay? So if you want to show up at some point, that could be a thing that we play. Because it's a Mind Clash. Although I don't think it's Mind Clash you like. I think it's Witches and Gardens and all those things. You should change your, name, your channel name to the Board Game Garden. That'd be good for you. Kirk, so no board games till they're older. I definitely don't want to get rid of any of my games. Wait, no board games till they're older? Definitely don't want to get rid of any of my games. I meant get rid of the kids. Just so on the same page. Uh, B Dog, for when trying to fit expansion in the base game box, do you usually throw away the cheap plastic inserts? Always. Always. As soon as I decide I want to keep the game, I throw away the cheap plastic insert. Almost always. It's situational. Almost always, though. Rick, yo. Yo, Rick. Krishna, what's your favorite legacy game? Uh, my favorite legacy game is probably Pandemic Legacy. It's still the one that I've played the most. I've played it five times by now. I mean, two season one, two season two, and one season zero. Largely subatomic. How do you pick what games go on the shelves behind you? Do you choose based on interesting box art? I have a full video where I talk about that. The short version is I choose it based on the types of games that have lots of more stuff behind it. So, for example, behind Cyberpunk, if I can get this out over here, behind Cyberpunk is, wait for it, I may have condensed this already. I condensed this already. There's, that, was, that, was, that was a good moment. I condensed it all into one box. I forgot about that. Behind Cyberpunk is nothing! But behind Arena of the Contest, I hope this goes well, is more Arena of the Contest. So usually that's the factor. Usually I don't want to forget that a game exists, but I don't want to waste box space. So um, usually I put the games behind it that have more stuff behind it. Uh, in the case of Cyberpunk, I forgot that I condensed it all, so um, I have to wait for that. Okay, what's your favorite legacy? I actually just added to my video list. Adam, I've never been gifted something on YouTube before. What does it do? Thank you, Gavin. Well, now you are a channel member, which means it's not a ton of things to it, but basically the th same perks you would get as a Patreon member, as a... Well, I, I don't do the giveaways on YouTube. I do the giveaways on Patreon and Ko-Fi, but um, past that, I... Uh you get to see some updates, some behind-the-scenes updates, behind-the-scenes videos. A few things like that will pop up. Uh, plus, you get to know that you're supporting the channel through Kevin, sort of, which I appreciate that. Okay, guys, money is an issue for Jenna. Yep, I know. Stacy, nice. Kevin, BJ, invite sent. Good, awesome, thank you. The Borgen Garden, you have no excuse. So what's your excuse? Time, time is the usual excuse. Brian, Mind Clash makes good games. I saw that one at PAX U. I saw it as a head-to-head -head two-player game. So the best way I can explain Project Ironwood right now is it's two-player root. 
it's very different to be clear, but it has that feeling. It's an asymmetric two-player game that is delightful so far, based on one play. Michael, I saw Titans unboxing your channel, but couldn't find reviews or gameplay. I haven't played it. Can you say something about Titans? I haven't played it. I love area control games and thinking about it since I'll pass the Monumental. I haven't played it. I want to. I want to. Ryan, Jenna likes Anachrony Septima and wants to play Tricarian. She's a Mind Clash girl and doesn't even know it. I just played Tricarian too, by the way. I just played Tricarian, so now I'm now up to speed on that one. Kirk, don't want to get rid of the kid either. Your choice, not mine. Morgan Garden, I don't often get this to the table. Stacy, classic. Uh, LOL, I'm a Mind Clash girly. I still want to play Anachrony. I need to do that. Wait, wait, Jenna, you know Anachrony. Oh, Jenna, tradesies, okay? I'll teach you Tricarian, you teach Anachrony. Sounds like a plan. Ben, what would be your must-have Black Lake expansion and Kickstarter characters? Slowly buying it all and deciding what to get next. So far, I have all the retail. Um, I always say the uh, the uh, Dead Eye Walkers and the um, Wolfsburg, or whatever it is. Those are the two expansions that will give you a lot more gameplay just because of the new zombie varieties. Peter, riffing on throwing away the cheap plastic insert, does removing or adding components to the box affect the resale value interest in the game? I believe so. I believe if you remove the inserts from a, from a box then you're inherently saying that the people who are going to buy that from you are either buying it at a reduced price or they have to be people who don't care at all. And some people want all those inserts. That's which is why I don't get rid of those inserts until I know I'm not keeping the game. But if I think I'm keeping the game, once I think I'm keeping the game, I throw out the inserts. Until then, don't care. Did Alex just, Vanessa, did Alex just trick himself with a cyberpunk box? Yes, I forgot that I've condensed that one. I don't always condense things right away. Sometimes it just takes time. Like, what's a game? Uh, I actually did succeed already. I don't know. Some games are just, I don't get to the condensing part right away. And I, I forgot that I did that. Alex, did you back a game called Cavango on Kickstarter? No. Stacy, I don't even know of it. I don't know about it at all. Stacy, storing games and standing up like that is hard. Things shift. They do shift. But also, I don't care. Ben, if you can see any video game fully adapted into a board game, not just taking the real theme like basically all video game adaptations, which would you choose? I'd love a full on. Age of Empires 2 board game. First of all, Age of Empires 3, so you're wrong offhand. Secondly, if you can see a video game fully adapted into a board game, I mean Slay the Spire kind of did the exact same thing. So Slay the Spire works, theoretically. Um, I don't know. The theme is often, often they will go. First person shooters are already going for theme. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Slay the Spire. Twine and Ribbon, speaking of tea, you're always drinking coffee. Do you have any tea preference? I like Earl Grey. Uh, I like boba tea. Does that count? It's kind of the only tea I really like. Otherwise, I drink tea when I'm sick. The Morgan Garden, not leaving France with the dogs constantly. That is that is the thing. Curve Garden Games, I've got three small box games that came in big boxes. I'm thinking of putting all... Th I've got three small games that came in big boxes. I'm thinking of putting all three games in one box, but it feels wrong for some reason. I hate putting games into boxes that aren't the right box. Condensing, I have no problem with, but... I hate it. I've done it once or twice. I still hate it. T, taking everything all in. Is that what T stands for? Is that a thing? Is that like actually a thing? I have no clue. I've heard of dishing the T. I just don't think of it. Uh, Brian, Alex just played Dracarian. Do you play Blaze Dracarian? Just Base Dracarian. Uh, as far as my thoughts, the short thoughts, and I'll do a review at some point, I will be reviewing just the base game, but, um, because I don't want to wait to fake some of that. So I need to get more plays in, then I'll review the base game, and then eventually if I play it more, we'll see, but don't count on it. Uh, not don't count on playing it more. I just find, I find holding out to go back to games, sometimes I do, but most of the time it's hard to do a, like, a, hey, I've played two expansions, let me cover it now. I like to do kind of base game or everything, for the most part. Um, but I... I think Dracarian is very well done, and I really enjoyed it. I also don't yet know if it would hit the table enough, considering it's like an hour per player. It's a longer game, but I do really like it. I want to play it more. I, I want to play the expansions. I'm not confident of where it ends up yet. It's a brilliant game, though. It's really well done. Ryan, Alex played Dracarian. No, Kenosha. Basic mod, but what would you rather play? Lords of Wadi, but Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. Jonathan, you also you play so many new games that you still find time to just play the games you love over and over, like Codenames. What are some other great games you get a lot of plays of? Oh, okay, so just random off the top of my head. Uh, Codenames, Castle Burgundy, Trio, Lost Runes of Arnak, uh, Seven Wonders Duel, um, uh, Vindication, Unsettled, um, I don't know, what else do I have? Inish, and that's been a while since I played Inish. I've taken Inish off the list. It might have been like a year since I played Inish, if not more. Um, it's a great game, I just happened to have not been playing it. Um, I don't know. There's lots of games that cycle in Feast for Odin. There's lots of games that cycle in and out. There's always... I, I go through these, I guess, moments where I play a lot of that game, whatever that game is. And sometimes there's big box games, sometimes there's small box games, but I definitely... There are great games in my collection I haven't played in years, and there are great games in my collection that I play a lot, and uh, it varies. 
B dog, when you throw away the cheap plastic inserts, do you have a problem of components bouncing around in there, or is that not a problem you find? Uh, generally, not a problem. I only throw out the inserts in order to make room for like expansion and stuff like that. So sometimes the boxes aren't as, as full, but it's not like I'm like I don't do a ton of travel with my games, so it usually works out just fine. The amount of broken miniatures I have in my collection relative to the games I have, the way I bag things and my kids playing with them, is a very small number, all things said. Kevin, I'm still waiting for you to finish Mech so I can claim it from you. Kevin, I do need to finish mechs, and you can claim it for me when I do. I should finish mechs. That's actually not a hard game to finish. It's like 10 games. I really should just finish it and move on. I started it twice, just I finished it neither of those times. Buddy, I would totally teach an acronym any day. It's my number one game, so come visit me in Colorado. I'll hook you up. The, it's the visiting part that I have a hard time with. People invite me a lot, and sometimes I'm able to. Other times, it's hard. Joey, I've made the hard decision recently to get rid of all my Black Plague Green Horde collection. Keeping around for nostalgia is crazy. There's just so much of the game. Joey, that is a hard decision. Kudos to you. Morgan Garden, Chai Tea. Jacob, do you prefer one all in... A chai tea is actually pretty good, by the way. That's actually... I actually... If you're going to have a tea, chai tea is not bad. Like, the sheer amount of flavor. But, like, things like Earl Grey, Green, Mint, Black, none of those things do it for me. But chai tea has got some, got some serious flavor. Jacob Justice, do you prefer all in one big box or multiple smaller boxes? Usually an all in one big box, but it does depend on the game. Ben, T is actually Tiny Epic Agriculture, the upcoming generic farming themed game from Scott Alms. That's that's funny. Brian, I think you're carrying a Dark Alley be more your jam. Change up the game and player powers become a thing. Base is very simplified to get people introduced to the game. Wait, just to be clear, Brian, the Dark Alley is where you have those four decks of cards, right? Because if so, yes, I played with that. I just didn't play with any of the actual... Is that an actual expansion or is that like a module? I played with the Dark Alley. Absolutely. The, and the player powers, I played with player powers too. You had your own individual... Yeah, no, I played with that. The base, I didn't play the base. I played with Player Powers and Dark Alley. I don't think I played with, like, Dollar's Gift or any of those other things. Board Game Officer, what is your favorite original insert, and do you have a favorite custom insert for a game? A favorite custom insert? Favorite original insert? These are good questions, and I'm sure I have answers. I just need to think about it. Parks has a great insert. Once you add the expansion, it's a little annoying, but Parks had a great insert, so I'm going to give props to Parks offhand. Um... My favorite custom insert. I don't know. Do I have any that are particularly amazing? There's a lot of good inserts. There's a lot of good inserts out there. But I don't, I don't know offhand which one would be my favorite custom. Kishendu, do you think Feast for Odin is better than Great Western Trail? For me, it certainly is. Vanessa, most inserts suck anyway. They never hold sleeve cards. Surprising amount of them do, but not the like factory ones for a retail game. Peter, yes, that's very annoying, Vanessa. Yes, it is. Kirik, have you heard that Monopoly's getting turned into a movie? Yes, I have. Which board game would you like to see get turned into a movie? Um, Oathsworn. Chai's from India, Sizzling. Peter, Scythe will make a good movie, Kirk. Brian, yes, Dark Alley's in addition. Base excludes Dark Alley to prevent information overload. I cannot imagine that I would have enjoyed to carry in nearly as much without Dark Alley. Um, so I'm glad I got taught Dark Alley. Stacey Evanel, Parks insert doesn't work if you stand the game up. Stuff goes everywhere. I want Liz and my inserts. I mean, you might need to have the um, the thingamajiggies underneath. I think if you have the, the punch boards underneath, it works. I think I have the punch boards underneath. But I might also have to change that because of the fact that I have all the expansions. I really need to play more Parks. I've played a lot of Parks base game. I've played, like, none of the Parks expansions. I really should do that at this point. Anyways, we are, I guess, looks like we're all caught up in chat. And we also are at the hour mark, which makes this a good time to actually go ahead and shut things down. So I'll go ahead and stick around for, like, another two or three minutes. But uh, then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Brian, I found that if you use 60 micron sleeves, it's much more achievable to fit into inserts. 100 micron, oh yeah, I don't do 100 microns. I do sleeve kings, which are 60 microns. What do you think is the greatest gateway game in the hobby? I mean, I think definitively Catan. Definitively, <laughs> definitively Catan. Um, Ticket to Ride's up there. I don't know. Katana and Ticket to Ride are very solid. Carcassonne's very solid. There's a lot of great gateway games that have really done a lot. I don't know what my favorite gateway game is, though. I don't know. I have to go look at my collection. Uh, Borgen Garden, not when you're eight minutes late. That's fair. I'll stick around until 2.38, at least. New, new American Underground. Alex, off topic. Off topic. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this chat up. Let's, no, let's, let's do this. The New American Underground. Alex, off topic, but I've been asking all my favorite content creators, would you share your feelings on what is going on in Gaza? So this is a yikes kind of conversation. I'm not shy of things, but also that can get me in trouble sometimes. I, I, the very short version, I'll do, I'm going to do the short version so it doesn't take up forever, 
is I've talked about Gaza in the past. I will continue to talk about Gaza when it's relevant. If you ask me questions, I do not shy away from questions. I'm trying to think the best way to cover this appropriately. And understand my bias, just for the record. Understand my bias for sure. I am someone who grew up religious. I am very culturally Jewish. I have a lot of affinity towards, well, frankly, Judaism, Israel, all those things. And so I'm coming at it with a bias, for sure. No differently than a Palestinian would come at it with their own bias or whatnot. And I think that's definitely present. We are this where you live. If you're in any way Palestinian, uh, if you're a Muslim for that matter, I think you're likely coming at it with your own bias too. I think Israel and Gaza is a very complicated situation. No question. It's very complicated. And it's not like a write-off, dismissal, whatever. I think that there's a lot of generational hatred between... Generation, I don't want to call it hatred. There's a lot of generational tension between Jews and Palestinians. That makes it very hard and very complicated. And a lot of the situations around Gaza do come down to when do you start tracking history. That's a lot of it. A lot of it comes down to when do you start tracking? Whose land was it? Who took it? There's a lot of history that people don't actually realize of, you know, when the British came in, the British took over, they kind of gave the land to the Jews, the Jews didn't really take it from the Palestinians. There's a lot of history that's present, but a lot of it's complicated too. And there have definitely been things along the way on all sides that are not great. There are things Israel has done as a government, not Israelis individually. There are things Israel has done as a government that are problematic. And there's things that Gaza has done as a government that is literally run by Hamas, which I do view as a terrorist organization, that is also problematic. I think there are many complications on both sides that make it very, very hard to navigate around. I think there's a, I think there's a level of, I'm trying to think of how to cover this again properly, sensitively. I think what happened on October 7th is not okay. I think the events that started all this are not okay. I don't care if you view it as a freedom fighter taking over. I just, I don't care. I have no, I have no tolerance for the idea that October 7th was okay. And October 7th is the thing that kicked off the current round of escalation. And it is the thing that has forced Israel to question. Israel as a government, as an entity, is forced to constantly examine whether, how to address that you're living next door to people who are trying to kill you. And again, there is the question of, okay, well, why do you want to kill them? How do you go, how do you deal with that? But regardless of where the history is, and I don't mean that to dismiss it, I have my own opinion of the history, and I just think it, I think it almost doesn't matter, even though I still side with Israel on that part. The tricky part is, and this is a lot of background there to it, the tricky part is that I don't think what Israel's doing now is helping Israel or helping anyone. I think that realistically speaking, when you have this much tension between two sides, I think the situation sucks, and I think you're constantly dealing with constant escalations and poking and people attacking you. Like the, that, It's always been a situation of, Gaza lashing out at Israel and killing Israeli civilians. And that's always been a case. And again, if you view them as being unfairly occupied, then that's the resistance. They should rise up. I mean, it's complicated. Like, I, don't, I don't think so. I think terrorism attack is, I think terrorism is terrorism. But I do think still that what is happening is a response. Unfortunately, the way I'd put it, the way I would put it is that unless Israel is straight up willing to exterminate Gaza, absolutely. Unless they're willing to take everyone out, then you're just continuing the cycle of hostility. And I think it sucks. I think it sucks that Israel has to sit there and just take the attacks. And I don't think it's fair. But fair is not how life works. Reality is how life works. And so as much as I do think Israel has a right to defend itself, I'm more concerned with whether it's helpful how they're handling it or doing it. I don't think it is right now. So that's, I kind of have, I think that, I think pain and suffering absolutely suck. I think pain and suffering on all sides suck. I think there are innocent people who are dying as a result of this, and there's far more innocent Palestinians dying, although I don't think that makes Israel wrong, so they're on the same page. I'm not, I think that war is messy and brutal, and I think in World War II, when you had more German civilians dying, when, you know, Britain was dropping bombs on them, I don't think that made Israel, I don't think it made Britain wrong. I think war is messy and sucks. I think for me, the bigger question is just, is it, is what they're doing even a helpful reaction or response? And I don't know if it is. So, do I think there's any simple answer for Gaza? No. Do I think it sucks all around? Yes. I'd happily get into this conversation in more detail with people directly one-on-one -on -one as well. I just think, I think it's a very hard conversation. Um, yeah, that's the somewhat short answer. Uh, this, I can go into it for much longer. It's just the tricky part about doing this on YouTube. And one of the reasons I don't want to do it too much on YouTube is I think that, I think this type of conversation works best as an actual conversation. When I'm just talking and going on a monologue to you and all you have back is the ability to occasionally do a comment, that's not really, that means you have the ability to disagree with me, but not to engage in an actual conversation. And I think engaging in a conversation is a much better way to do it. But it sucks all around. That's the um, short answer.
Vanessa, thanks for the chat. Till next time. Until next time, indeed. Buddy, I love the Vindication Archive inside insert and the Anachrony Infinity Box insert, but since it's a big box, I'm not sure if those count. Agreed. Uh, Curve Cut Games, have a great week. Brian, Buddy Berglin, agreed. My Jacarian box just arrived today. It makes the game so much easier to table. I actually need to punch my Jacarian box because I didn't play my copy. Now I need to punch it and get it all right or whatnot. Kishanu, if one is starting a collection, what would be the top 10 games you suggest? Uh, what would be the top 10? If one is starting a collection, what would be the top 10 games you suggest? I have a video called Top 10 Games to Start a Collection. You can check that out. More Collect, how excited are you for Tebru? I'm excited. I'm excited. I have Tebru. I need to table it. I liked Bad Karmas, but I didn't necessarily love Bad Karmas. So I'm still, meaning I, I liked it. I want to play it, but I'm not yet. Right now, I'm a believer in the Tebru system without having loved the games. I've enjoyed the games. Smooth, have you played the small solo game Tin Realm? I have not. Kushan, no offense, I'm a newbie here, but how many, how many times have you played Great Western, Great Western Trail? Um, never, no offense ever taken. Great Western Trail, I don't know for sure, because I, I've had it for, like, I, I got it, I got rid of it, I got it back, I played it more. I think I've played Great Western Trail like six times, I think, but I've also played it on BGA, so maybe more. I think I've played it like six, five or six times in person, plus a few BGA plays. So a decent amount, but not a crazy amount. Adam, I just got Tin Realms and enjoying it. My time with it so far, a solid game for 20-30 minute window. Good. Ben, as a Jew living in Israel, I don't think you, or anyone not living through this war, should be expected to answer for a conflict thousands of kilometers away from you. Uh, ben, so I don't take it as, I don't think I was being, and I didn't take the question as that I'm expected to answer for a conflict. I'm not responsible for anything happening in Israel. Straight up, I'm just not. I have no, I have not, I'm not, I don't vote there. I have nothing to do with it. Uh, the closest thing you can answer as responsibility is that the, whatever opinion that might exist. I, I didn't take it as a, as an ownership, but ownership or not, I think opinions are still present. And like, like I think the entire world was very, not entire world, I think 95% of the world was very united around the Russia-Ukraine conflict and how that was taken and presented. 95%. There's still people who are, you know, for more for Russia, but I think most people are kind of like, hey, Ukraine is the innocent person here. Innocent, whatever. I think Israel and Gaza is much more complicated, and there's a lot, there's a media war being fought. There's an absolute media war. There's perception left, right, and center as far as what's presented. And the tricky part is, I think, I absolutely feel that, I absolutely feel that there are people on the Israeli side who have said things that don't reflect well on I don't reflect well. I think that people on the Israeli side have said things that are casual about the loss of human life in a way that doesn't reflect well. I think that's true with Hamas too, but no one expects differently from a self, like a, from a terrorist organization if there's not an expectation of better behavior. And that's complicated, especially if you're the stronger party, especially if you have more military might. I think you need to be doubly careful with what you say and how you present yourself and your actions and your words and all that. So I have opinions, but I don't think I'm accountable. Efrain, which IP would you like to see in a board game? Mine will be Zelda. Um, I think I've always said Bioshock. Peter, Steele, Alex's favorite coffee. And so I currently like uh, the Too Many Bones coffee, the uh, the nutty one. I like that one a lot. Lars the Subatom, no, uh, Kevin, I'm looking for my first solo medium game campaign. Any suggestions? Things like Aftermath interest me. I recommend Agamonia a lot. I think it's a reasonable time frame, nothing too long. Largely subatomic. I want to back the full ATO. I want to back the ATO reprint, but I'm not nervous about how much stuff into Unknown is offering. Um, I'm not worried about the Ponzi aspect or the Mythic Games stuff in your comment, but I, I just think it's a lot of content. I would be intimidated by that much content, but that's because I go wide, I don't go deep. Ryan, large sum atomic, I was just the original content you haven't played before, things will deliver for sure, plenty of content to play. Kushanu, what is your choice for a war game? Have you played Undaunted Normandy, your thoughts? I don't love war games as much, but I did really enjoy, um, General Orders, I think it's called, General Orders, from the same publisher, but I like that one more. Chris, will you be doing a full review for Marvel Zombies and or X-Men Resistance? I'd love to at some point, but like I've already been pretty clear in my opinion a lot. I guess technically I haven't actually reviewed it. I probably should at some point. Um, I just want to play through like more of it. But then I'm in, this is the problem I always have with these games. I'm like stuck in that cycle of I want to play more before I review it. And then sometimes four years go by and I'm like, here's my review of Marvel Zombies. I I've been fairly public about my thoughts on it. I like Marvel Zombies a lot. It's one of my favorite th games in the Zombicide series, but I have not done a dedicated review properly. I probably should. And I think with that, we have hit 241. We are officially at an hour, even by John Accounting. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up to all of you. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate all of you being here. Um, I appreciate you showing up for these. And uh, until next time, I hope you have a good one. I'll see you next week.